This show is a lot of fun. It's one that I was not familiar with the source material, but I'm definitely interested in checking it out now. Um, so what about the show, though, really drew you both to the project? Uh, Mia, if you'd like to start and then Jason. Yeah, um, I've always been a little bit familiar with League of Legends. Um, my brother plays, and I've also just kind of always been aware of how massive and loyal the fan base is. And I was also immediately just drawn to Powder as a character. The writing is brilliant. Everything about the show is brilliant. They did, they've done such an incredible job. But um, Powder, I just see a lot of myself in her. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, there are so many reasons why I love our game. <laughs> and for me, playing Silco, Jason Spizak, I play Silco, and uh, who wouldn't want to play a manipulative psychopath? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, no. I mean, I, I get to play a fair bit of villains. I mean, I played the Joker in Batman Hush. Um, and but when you get asked, hey, could you play this villain, quote unquote, I mean, I never approach it that way. A villain is just a hero of a different story. And when I read Silco for the first time, the monologue had this beauty to it, this efficiency of words, economy of tone, and yet it was so um, ruthless in what it's outlining. The monologue I'm referring to is, do you ever wonder what it's like to drown? When he has that monologue at the top of season three or episode three. And it's, it struck me like a, a piercing violin note the first time I ever read those words and the voice, it, it just followed right along. It, it was almost like a, a, a jacket I was meant to wear, I guess. <laughs> So then what would you say were some of the creative challenges for you both uh, finding the heart of your characters and then bringing them to life uh, through your voice work? I already had something to go off of. Uh, Jinx is Jinx. Everyone knows Jinx. Everyone, most people love Jinx. Um, Powder is a new character. If you look at it that way, you don't know Powder. Um, but taking Jinx and breaking her down to see who Powder was, was difficult, but at the end of the day, extremely rewarding. Um, also, there were some scenes in the show where Powder is going through it, to, to put it very lightly, <laughs> and kind of tapping into those emotions and trying to not let it affect me outside of recording um, was difficult, but I think, I know that I did my best work on those scenes and throughout the entire show. You did an amazing job. That's so just, did you. Just, and, oh, and Silco, one of the, the toughest things when you get someone, a, a character like Silco, who runs the show behind the scenes is the the, the puppet master in the shadows, the, it's challenging. You don't want to overplay that. Silco is a very subtle character. And one of the challenges when you get the material is, you know, you read the words and some of them can seem very demonstrative, but it's not, it's, it's an art of weapons that are words. And if you, you know, you be true to him and don't overdo it, you end up with something beautiful to, to watch and you're waiting for the next move that Silco makes in his chess match. So yeah, one of the challenges was definitely not to, not to overplay it at all. So then given that um, I, I've talked with, with Ella and everybody else already so far and they've mentioned how they got, they got a little room to play with the characters during sessions. I mean, did you both also get the opportunity to improv a little bit and and sort of find uh the the rhythm of your characters in each session that you had uh yeah definitely um I was immediately kind of I, I felt connected to powder right off the bat but exploring her relationships with her her other family members character like whatever people in the show um that took a little bit more getting used to and a little bit more thinking and playing around with. But yeah, I mean, the entire team 
they are so generous and so willing to play around with us and see what works. And I think the final outcome was really, really phenomenal. And one of the examples of the commitment to their craft, Christian and Alex, the, the two creators of Arcane, uh, they, when we were recording the pilot, they actually came into the voiceover booth with me. So I was not alone. Usually you're on one side of the glass and the engineer and the producers and everybody else is on the other side of the glass. But they actually came and sat in the room with me so that we could bounce ideas off each other and just feel the creative energy for where they wanted Silco to land and to just try things in the beginning. I mean, again, I was very close to what they wanted, you know, vocally and my approach to the character, but you want to never leave anything on the table. So I would constantly ask them, hey, can we try it this way? Hey, can we try it that way? Just to see which one of them landed with them the best. And sometimes it wasn't what they expected. You, you know, as a, a creative process, you're always made better by the other people in the room. So if you, if you try stuff, it may be something that they never thought of. And they're the creator. You never know. You're bringing that for them. And that's your job. So, yeah. So then what was it like for both of you also getting to work with the various stages of animation that were prepared for your recording sessions? Because I know that uh, some of it was fully ready. Some of it was just pre-visualization. So what was that like for each of you, you know, seeing these various stages and then, uh, you know, recording your lines? I got the job when I was 10. Um, I turned 11 while I was working and now I'm going to be 16 in December. So it's been a while for everyone. Um, I didn't really have any sort of character art, really, if I'm remembering correctly, to go off of at first. I think I had like maybe a couple sketches, if at all, to kind of look at and figure out who Powder was. But at, at the same time, I also had uh, Jinx. I always had Jinx to go off if I was feeling lost, if I was feeling confused as to who she was, I always could go back to Jinx and break it down from there. And I came in a little bit late in the process. They had already done, uh, I think, a scratch recording of the pilot, and there was some character art for Silco. It wasn't final. Um, but our recordings in the booth when we recorded the episodes for Arcane there was nothing up on the screen. So no. we were doing a radio play in a sense. I mean, not all the actors at once, but you were creating this out of a vacuum. And they would show you some art references like they did show me pictures of uh, Piltover yep, and uh, I got that one. the Undercity and Zon. And they showed those things to give you the sense of what it looks like when you're going to be, you know, dropped in on animation. But you're just you're just doing it in an empty room, you know, at least for until you're doing ADR. And then at that point, you are, you do see, you know, the sketches and things like that. Mm -hmm. They would play back whatever they had for us when they could, but it, it, you know, it was pretty deep into the process before we saw. Yeah, I think the first time I saw any sort of clip of Arcane mm -hmm. was very recently. Um, maybe like my second last session that I had before the season came out. Um, yeah, but I remember when I saw it, I was blown away. Yeah. I think I like stood there for a sec after watching it and I was just kind of like, what? Because I was <laughs> expecting it to be phenomenal, obviously. I mean, Riot as a whole is just so talented. But I don't think anything could have prepared me for the complete and utter incredible job that they did. It's a visual extravaganza, but also auditorially the music that they choose and all the chorus of voices and voice actors they got. And, you know, it, it is a complete and whole phenomenal piece. That word comes up a lot, but in order to, to be that way, every aspect of the show had to bring it. And it does, you know, from the first episode, you're just, you're just sitting there watching it. Like, I just love this so much. <laughs> yes, I can corroborate that that is in fact the case. <laughs> <laughs> you're grabbing your popcorn. 
Mm. You're just you're not eating the couch. I have my my soda and my popcorn, and I'm like, just <laughs> I I cannot look away. Like I'm not even just saying that. Even if I wasn't in the show, I would still be absolutely blown away. Yeah, Fortiche, the animation studio. I have to give a shout out to them in every interview I can because they they did incredibly. They did. They absolutely did. Well, I couldn't agree more. I think they did an incredible job. I think you both and the entire cast did an incredible job. This is a show that I'm very eager to spread the word about. So thank you both so much for taking the time to chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself, Grant.